unlocking promotions, salary secrets, knowing your worth, and more. As a corporate girly for almost the past decade working in tech and consulting, I'm about to spill the tea on how not to just survive, but thrive in this wild corporate world. Stay tuned for my hot take on toxic productivity and hustle culture, because this would have saved me such a big headache when I was early in my career. So let's get started and level up your career. All right, ladies, your career secret weapon is knowing your strengths and your confidence in your own skill. Your confidence will help you network, advocate, and negotiate, which are all building blocks of leveling up your career. If you're just starting out your career or you're new, it can be really hard to feel confident in your skills and abilities or your strengths. Trust me, I've been there. When I was a student in business school, I was interviewing for a new grad rotational program at a bank, and I was like, why would they hire me, I have no real world, big girl job experience. But the recruiter actually asked if I've ever considered project management because of my skills organizing so many university conferences and also leading group projects at school. This caused me to rethink my strengths and I've actually been a project manager for the last eight years because of that one comment. So the lesson learned is to really think and reflect on your transferable skills because it can be wider than you originally think. A quick tip, a really easy way to assess your strengths is taking a quiz like the Clifton Strengths Enneagram or Ocean. If you already have job experience, it's time for a reality check and you might be really pleasantly surprised. So I thought I was always bad at networking thanks to awkward high school version of me and I didn't like it at all, but I was really surprised when my manager a couple years ago told me in a performance review that I was really good at relationship building from other feedback that she gathered. So I was honestly so surprised. The moral of this story is you might be underestimating yourself. We as women do that so much. We don't give ourselves enough credit. So get feedback. You might be pleasantly surprised. Lastly, learning and growing is also a part of building our worth and knowing our worth. If you want to take that course or certification, learn that new skill, book coffee chats to pick people's brains, go out there and do it. And don't forget, volunteering for conferences or even non-for-profit organizations and job shadowing are also valid, free and easy ways to get skills and experiences. Now it's time to talk about unlocking promotions. So promotions are so much more than just merit. It's a mix of advocacy, networking, and finding those allies. And I wish I knew this when I started my career because I used to hate and dread corporate politics. I did not want to do the networking. I didn't want to kiss up to anyone. Like I hated it. But after your girl was passed up for promotions twice early in my career, I was like, all right, what the hell do I need to do to get promoted? And I realized that promotions require more than just effort. It means making your achievements known. And it's not what you do, but it's who knows about what you're doing that counts. I used to think this was really unfair, but honestly, if you think about it, if they don't know who you are and they don't know what you've done, how are you gonna get promoted? So how do you play the corporate politics promotion game? I got you covered. First thing is advocacy. You need to advocate for yourself. Set clear goals with yourself and your manager. If your manager knows your goal is to get a raise, a promotion, get a bigger project, whatever it is, they can help find opportunities and experiences for you to align yourself to those goals. Second is keeping the receipts. Document all your successes. If someone tells you you did a great job, if you killed a project, if you did anything that is worth talking about and worth a reason to get promoted, write it down and review it with your manager on a regular basis. Next tip is be proactive. Active. Don't just sit and wait and twiddle your thumbs to get promoted. You want to get out there and make your own opportunities. Propose new ideas or projects that align with your goals. Maybe you want more visibility. Create a women's network. You can 
uh, propose to improve an existing process that's been a pain in everyone's neck. You can help with new hire onboarding, training employees, rolling out a new initiative, whatever it is, put yourself out there. Next is regularly seeking feedback. If you are able to regularly assess your strengths and areas of improvement, you can work on those skills that can help you get closer to your promotion. And last is building relationships. Networking is not just for job searching, it's also needed for your promotion, but how do I network? Who do I network with? I got you. My next tip is finding mentors and sponsors. Mentors are experienced individuals who have the know-how and can guide you and give you feedback. Look for people in your field with experiences and career paths you admire. They can be in your company or outside of your company. Sponsors are people in positions of influence and power who can help advocate for you, help you get opportunities, and help you get seen. Sometimes it's your direct manager or other people in higher positions in your company. So while you're networking, can keep in mind reciprocity. While they're giving you guidance, you can always offer your support and help. Maybe you can proactively identify a pain point for them and help them solve it. Maybe your manager has a really tedious report. Can you help them with it or automate it somehow? Another thing to keep in mind is strategic visibility. You want to make connections in areas that your potential sponsors are involved. Maybe it's a specific committee or a specific project. All right, here's the real dirt. Have you heard of a ghost manager? So a ghost manager, manager, is an absentee manager, manager who does the bare minimum, is not invested in your career at all, and I've had the pleasure of having one in my decade-long career as a corporate girly, but if you're in this situation, it is so important to find your own mentor and sponsor to help elevate you in your company and get that promotion. The people I've seen get really fast promotions in companies have always had a really strong sponsor at work. It can seem like favoritism, but it's all fair in the corporate battlefield. And again, if they don't know who you are, they don't like you, and they don't know what you've done, how are you supposed to get a promotion? Next up is salary secrets. And I'm not gonna gate keep anything here, so take notes. Number one is research. Know your worth. Do not go on Glassdoor. It is so outdated. You want to use websites like levels.fyi and forums like Fishbowl and Reddit to post and search for what people are making. Here's my pro tip. Look for recruitment agencies in your city. They will publish really detailed reports for salary in your area. For example, here's Motion Recruitment's tech report for 2024 in Toronto. Next up is negotiating your salary. I have three golden rules. The first one is always negotiate no exceptions. Second one is never tell them what you want to make first. This is why, and here's a cautionary tale. One of my friends was at like a third round of interviews with this company and they asked him, what do you want to make? So he threw up a larger number than he was currently making. So let's say, for example, he was making 100K. He told them, I want to make 130K, like, you know, 30%. That's a good salary increase. But this recruiter was really respectful because sometimes low balling recruiters will just take your number and run with it. This recruiter told him, actually, the salary range is up to 165. So learn from this, guys. Do not tell the recruiter what you want to make first, because especially as women, we can be really undervaluing ourselves. Now, the good news is there's a lot more salary transparency acts rolling out in Colorado, British Columbia. So now more and more job posting post their ranges. Even with the ranges, my third rule is there's always some wiggle room in that salary band or that title. I've personally negotiated higher titles from project manager to senior project manager, and I've negotiated higher base salaries around five to 10%. For exact scripts on what to negotiate, I outlined them in my how to negotiate for women video. So take a look. So the next salary secret is changing jobs. This can be a really strategic move for salary growth and career advancement. I've personally changed jobs twice to get higher titles because I was passed up for promotions since earlier in my career, I didn't really want to or know how to play the corporate politics game. And sometimes it's about leverage because like I said, why would they want to promote you if they don't know who you are, they don't know what you've done, and they don't know your real value. So when I was a project manager, I wanted to get a senior project manager promotion, but my company at the time, it was during COVID, they told me we don't have enough budget, the economy is rough, blah, blah, blah. 
And I went out there and I got myself another offer at a different company. And I told my manager at the time, who I honestly respected so much, really loved working with her, that I was leaving the company because I got a better offer. And then the company did a 180 and told me, what are you making? We're gonna match it, please stay. But I ended up leaving the company anyways. So it's, sometimes it is true, they don't have enough budget, but it's also a matter of leverage. Have you asked yourself why you're climbing the corporate ladder or hustling? Like, what is your end game? It's really important to take time to reflect on what is your personal end game? Why are you on this career journey? What are your own values and goals? Maybe you wanna build financial wealth, increase your job security, or make an impact. But whatever it is, know what your end goal is so you're not on this endless treadmill of hustling. And here is a hot take. Capitalism wants you to believe that your worth is in your job title, what you own, how much money you have, and how productive you are. And girlies, that is toxic productivity. I do not subscribe to it, but I was a victim of it in my early 20s. When I was in my early 20s, I went to business school. Everyone there talked about making it in life, building that startup, getting a prestigious job offer, and I drank the Kool-Aid and I believed in the same stuff. So I used to struggle a lot with comparing myself to my peers. I started startups to chase that hustle and I severely burnt out. And honestly, in the past, I used my free time to do productive things like listen to podcasts, work out, train for races, learn a new language, take on side hustles, the list goes on. I did not know the value of rest and leisure and I did not know how to relax. But now I value my health, connections, and leisure. I'm no longer comparing my job titles to my peers, and instead I'm focusing on building friends, genuine connections, a community, and really learning how to rest and enjoy the journey instead of just racing to that end goal. So get out your journal and really think about what are your values and what goal are you working towards and why? So how do we turn all of this into an action plan so you can level up your career? First, I want you to take a strengths test. Take that quiz, look at what your strengths are and reflect on it. Second, take an inventory of who your mentors and sponsors are at work. And if you don't have any, brainstorm ideas of who you can connect with. Third, take some time to research what you're worth on the job market today. And lastly, get your journal out, think about your values and what your end goal in your career is. Lastly, if you've ever felt not good enough, if you've doubted your skills, and if you've experienced any type of imposter syndrome, you are not alone. So many women struggle with imposter syndrome, but there is a way to overcome it. Check out my video about how to overcome imposter syndrome once and for all, because you deserve to be living your best confident AF life. Thanks for watching. Bye.